Hey there folks, thank you for joining me on day four of this. If this looks familiar, it's because it's what I was wearing for day three. Uh, I'm recording these back to back so that that way I have these ready to go uh, over the next few days. We're continuing our exploration of button shy solo games with Death Valley from Kevin Ellenberg. My apologies to uh, Bohan Praklajic, I'm, I'm probably mispronouncing that name horribly, uh, for Rage More. I forgot to give the credit for that uh, for yesterday's. Uh, game playthrough. Uh, this is a push your luck game involving scenery in Death Valley. Uh, I am still not entirely sure I understand how the game works, uh, so this will probably not be the best uh, video in terms of learning how to play the game or how to what strategy you need. Uh, but the game is like all other button shy games. It's 18 cards plus some instructions. Uh, very easy to go through. We're going to put that up there so we have that to look at. Uh, we'll keep the instructions over here for reference purposes. And to start the game, uh, the game involves cards in different suits, uh, sun, water, mountain, got a bunch of upside down ones here, and critter. And uh, essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to avoid getting three of the same type of card in your journey in your scrapbook. You'll be playing up against an AI player that will be continuing to collect cards as it goes along, uh, following some, some specific set of rules. Uh, the final scoring in the game will be based on what's in the bottom here for the AI. So this says plus three if this card has adjacent cards on both its left and right. It won't care about the qualifier there. It'll just look at the plus three and say plus three. It won't worry about any negative points. So this, if this one said negative one point for something, it's not going to care. In addition, it will also get points for all of the stars that it has in its, uh, in its journey. Um, the game is played until there's only one card left in the desert. That'll be formed over here. We'll go ahead and get this started, and I'll sort of explain as we go along. And I think I had just done a partial playthrough of this uh, prior to this, uh, and had not realized I had forgotten to hit the record button. So, which is good, because the AI was kicking my butt. All right. Something I've heard. Uh, something I heard of some time ago is that it requires seven shuffles uh, to ensure that you have an equal possibility of any possible arrangement of cards, regardless of where you start. And that's for a deck of fifty-two. So eighteen, I would imagine, is a lot simpler. I tend to just do a ripple shuffle. Uh, sorry, not a ripple shuffle. Just a whatever, whatever that's called. I'm sure somebody can correct me in the comments and educate me on the different types of shuffles. But that's pretty well shuffled, so we're gonna go ahead and start with that. I'm gonna leave the desert over here. We're gonna flip over the top card. Now that you go first when you're playing a solo, uh, you don't have to worry about the AI getting some sort of like advantage that way. Uh, we've got a critic card, and I'm gonna go ahead and take it. Um, if we can end up with a mountain card adjacent to it, that'll be great. Now, cards in your journey will go in your top row. Scrapbook will go down here. What's interesting is that Adjacency works both top and bottom as well as left and right. So if I have mountains here and here, that will count uh, plus three, plus two for each one. Uh, we then flip over the next card. The way that the AI will decide what to do is if the card will cause the AI to bust or will cause me to bust, the AI will give me the card. Uh, obviously, if it, if it causes me to bust, that's bad because then I have to discard the card and like a, a whole bunch of other crap stuff. And if it obviously doesn't want itself to bust. If the hazard that's in the on the card, in this case a water hazard, is already within the AI's set of cards, it will draw from the top card of the deck. Uh, otherwise, it will take the card and make it part of its journey. So this will start off with a four. And it's not great because that is going to be a plus three for the AI at the end of the game. We do not want that to happen. So now we get another one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and... Do I want to take it? So on the next turn, it won't take this card. It will take whatever's on the top. I could force it onto here. And I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and give that the AI this card. And ideally what's going to happen is that the AI will potentially bust. So the AI now goes. It has, does not have a mountain card yet, so it takes the mountain and makes that part of its hand. The next card is a sun. I'm going to go ahead and flip the next card, I think. 
All right, so I've got a, another one. This one's going to have two stars. Stars only count for points if they are in your journey. So if I move this to the scrapbook, it's bad. The numbers, by the way, indicate how many cards are like that in the deck. So there's only three critter cards, there's four water, there's five mountain, and then there's six sun. Now the AI gets to go, it will look at the sun and see that and just be like, I'm going to take that card. Next card is a mountain. I'm going to go ahead and take the mountain. The idea is that I will likely uh, put this in my scrapbook on the next turn uh, so that I have that to adjacent to this. So now we've got a four. Uh, we've got a water here. Sorry, not a four. We've got a water here. The AI can't take this water card. It would bust otherwise. So it's going to give me the card instead. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and move this mountain down here. I can also choose to swap this with a card in my journey. I am resting right now. I can choose to hide this too. Uh, I'd like to keep this mosaic can uh, canyon out because this is going to give me plus one for every type of hazard, and I've already got all four hazards. Uh, I'm not going to choose to rest. To, I'm not going to choose to do this. The may swap up the face of desert card with a card in the journey. Uh, it will go ahead and just take the cr uh, the critter here because it didn't already have a critter. And now that's up for me. I'm going to go ahead and take the critter. I can't bust with it because the other critters are already out. Uh, a sun comes up, so it can't do anything with the sun. It's already got a sun in there. It's going to take from the top card and get another sun. I am going to go ahead and now screw the AI. I can take this card and I can give it to the AI. This will cause the AI to bust. When you bust, you take the right-hand card of your journey. It goes into a discard pile. So that is done. That is gone forever. The remaining cards all become part of the deck. They all go back into the deck. So basically, the AI, the AI now starts from scratch. Neener, neener, neener. Which, yay. And I'm not at risk of busting unless uh, the critter card comes up, the three, which would be very bad. All right, so the AI gets to go. Uh, the AI will go ahead and take the water card. There's no reason not to. Uh, there's no other card for the AI. Next card is a sun card. Uh, I can choose to rest. I could actually get rid of this critter card if I wanted to. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and take the Scorpion card. I'm going to go ahead and rest with this down here. I'm then going to go ahead and hide the Coyote card so I can't possibly bust. I can then swap this with a card in my journey, but I don't want to. I don't want to swap for this because then that's going to put me at risk of busting. All right, so... Uh, AI is now going to get to go. The AI looks at the sun, says that looks good to me, takes that. Another sun comes up. Uh, I don't want that sun in my hand, so I'm going to go ahead and take the next card, and I get a sun anyway. And that's bad because... This is interesting. So this one, allow this one basically says ignore sun cards on cards adjacent to this card. So when you, if this were to give me this to bust, it couldn't bust because this sun would get ignored, which is absolutely brilliant. So I think, I think, now correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. So this would not cause me to bust. This would not cause the AI to bust. So it's not going to give me the card. Uh, it is already in the AI's list of cards. So it's going to take from the top. And it's going to end up with this critter. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, this is this is difficult.
I'm going to give it the, the Sun card. Put it in a dangerous situation. So it's going to ignore the water here. And instead, it's going to draw that card. Ugh, I hate that. I wanted that one. Uh, I could now choose this one. I don't want to go with it though. This is a trade. This is a tricky trade-off here. So the the water card, if I take it, I won't get points from any other water card. If this is a water card and it gets flipped over, they're going to give me the water card and I'll bust everything on the top here. If I give them the water card. They're going to take from the top of the deck no matter what, because they've now got one of every type of card. And I would like them to bust, so I'm going to go ahead and give them the water base, bad water basin. Alright, so again, it can't bust. I can't bust with it, but it will bust itself. So it's going to give me this card, and this will just simply get ignored because of the nature of that. Uh, there's now a five there, so now I can decide what to do. I can. I think I'm going to be really risky here, and I'm going to take the mountain. How many cards are left? We've got three cards left. We've got three mountains out. We've got five. I'm going to give it the mountain. I'm going to give the AI the mountain because there's a two, th two and three chance that this next card is a mountain. It's a water. Uh, it would bust with that, so it's going to give me that. I don't bust yet. I'm not sure if you can actually see all that. This will cause them to bust, so I'm going to give them that. So the Dante's view card gets discarded. All the other cards get shuffled back in. And I am at a huge risk here because if I pull up a sun, if it comes up sun or water, they're going to bust me. And we're going to basically, the only thing that we will have done is gotten rid of two cards and given these, put these two cards in my scrapbook. So, yay. I, what I probably should have done is I probably should have put this into my scrapbook and then gotten rid of these two cards and hidden them. That would have been the smart thing to do. Mountain. It does not have see a mountain in my hand. I can't bust with that, so that goes there. Uh, I can now. I'm gonna go ahead and rest. I think. I think I have to. I think I have to. I'm gonna move. Uh, I'm gonna move this to the scrapbook. I'm gonna hide these two below it. And ideally, I'll get one more to put there. Uh, it's not going to draw this mountain because it already has a mountain. So we'll take the cop card from there and we'll get the five mountain. I'm going to go ahead and ruin its day. I'm going to bust it. And it will. these two will get shuffled back in. Ideally, I'd like to get one more card over here. If I get one more card over there, I'll feel, I'll feel pretty happy with the score. I will say this game is going on a little bit longer than I would have thought, but it's, only, it's not too bad. It's only 14 minutes so far. So it then draws that for its own hand. Uh, I could draw. This. That would cause me to bust, so I can't do that. So I will go ahead and take this. I got a snake. That's going to do me no good. It's going to go ahead and take the water card. Uh, no, it's going to give me the water card, no matter what. Oh, that was a stupid move. That was a stupid move on my part, because it was going to give me that water card no matter what. Yeah, that was that was stupid. So I bust. It, this is going to get discarded. Uh, I can choose to keep this card... Uh, 
avoid shuffling this back into the deck. If I do that, is there any reason that that would be helpful? I don't think so. That card's going to go away. We're going to take these and shuffle these back in. That was stupid of me. All right, so that was its move on me. I now get this. I'm taking this. I don't care if I run the risk of getting busted again. And it will bust me. So this will get discarded. This gets shuffled back into the deck. I really want those five stars. Uh, it, this is now my turn. I'm going to go ahead and draw from here. I'm getting the sun. It does not have a water, so we'll draw that. Uh, I will... I don't know if I can actually look, if it's legal to look at what's under here. I think I'm going to go ahead and take this one. I don't think there's another water for it to bust with. And it's going to take that mountain, which blows. I was trying to avoid that. Uh, uh, this... Oh. I am going to rest with that so I can get the plus three points for that. It already has a sun, so it will take a card off the deck and get the three. There's only one card left in the desert, and the game is done. That blows. Oh, my God, that blows. Anyway, so the AI score... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I. Okay, so in the base game, the AI will score one point for each star in its journey, so it's going to get a whopping ten points for the stars, and I am I feel so stupid on that. Uh, it'll get a plus uh, for each of the positive scoring abilities. So it'll get plus one for Mesquite Flat Dunes, plus one for Mosaic Canyon, plus one for Snakes. It does not care about why, so it doesn't have to apply anything for that. So it's not going to, fortunately, plus five, which would have been really bad. Um, it will, however, get three, so it scores 13. We also ignore the negative two uh, that's on the Devil's Golf Course here. It does not care about the negative point, so it scores 13. Uh, my score over here is going to be four. Oh, this is just bad. This is just bad. I'm going to get three for this. Uh, three for this, and I completely messed up this ability. The, oh, man. I am just bad this this just went bad this just went really bad i get no points for this i get two points for this uh it doesn't really matter if i had hidden this card i would have gotten six points for this but because i have this card it's going to ignore the points i would have gotten for that so either way i either would have had five or eight and it really would have made much difference i could have hidden that card under there but the two stars oh this is just bad so this is my first loss believe it or not of the four games so four days so far um, but the AI just basically kicked my butt, uh, and it was all almost all entirely because of that one card. Uh, so anyway, that is Death Valley. I have taken my first loss of the season uh, of 2022. Uh, a fun little game. Uh, definitely, uh, now that I've got played it a few times, I feel like I've gotten the hang of it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put this away. Uh, these all go back in here. I definitely think I did not play that very well, so if you have uh, different comments for different things that you think you would have done differently, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, I did I did not play that well. I did not play that well. And it, much with like all with other button shy games, it takes no time at all to go ahead and, and put this away. Uh, it is amazingly quick. Um, I gotta say, I love button shy games. They, they, there's a lot more in their catalog I'm looking forward to getting. I will probably do another week where it uh, continues to do butter, uh, button shy games. Uh, overall, so 2022 is going to be interesting in terms of how I structure the year, in terms of the playthroughs. I've sort of started to put together a calendar of what the first month is going to be like, and I'm sticking with various theme weeks. So the first week are small games, five button shies, and then two tiny epics. And then I have a third tiny epic, Tiny Epic Zombies. I'm going to use that to launch the second week. That'll be all zombie games. 
uh, ending with Welcome to Zombies, which will roll into a week of just nothing but the Welcome to variants. There are a ton of variants we're Welcome to. I'll be doing all those. Uh, but because I don't have 360 different games to really do this with, uh, I will be coming back to various themes over the course of the year. So I will definitely do another Button Shy week. Uh, at that point, I will hopefully have a few more Button Shies. They're relatively inexpensive. Um, I think they're like 12 bucks each, 12 or 14 bucks each. Uh, buttonshy.com, I, I can't say enough good things about them. Uh, tomorrow, we'll be doing this. We'll be doing Strawopolis, which I think the game that everyone thinks of. It, it's everyone's favorite Button Shy game. Uh, it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, it started off life as a print and play um, with a lot of expansions. Uh, but of all the games that I've seen Button Shy put out, this is the this is the king. This is the king of the Button Shy games, and we're going to do that on day five, and that'll be tomorrow. And I'll actually have on a different shirt because I'm going to be done recording for the day. Thank you all for joining me, uh, and please again, if you if you saw that I did something wrong in the gameplay, if you would have done something differently, please say so in the comments. Uh, do all the YouTube things. Click like, click subscribe, and click the bell icon for more notifications. And I will see you all tomorrow.